Thank you, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. We are starting a new series today titled Living in the Kingdom of God. Living in the Kingdom of God. I will lay the foundation today and maybe uh, take one E and then uh, we continue next week. We must understand that we are being redeemed from a kingdom into a kingdom. We have been rede- we have been redeemed from a kingdom into a kingdom. We have been redeemed from the kingdom of the devil to the kingdom of God. This life or this earth is a battlefield for two kingdoms. This earth we are on is a battlefield for two kingdoms. Two kingdoms. You know, when Rebecca was pregnant, he went to God. God, why am I like this? He said, he said two people and two nations are in your womb. They are fighting. You see, this earth we are in is a battle of two kingdoms. The kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. When Adam fell, all of us, all humanity was plunged into the kingdom of darkness. Jesus Christ came and by his death, his crucifixion, death and resurrection, brought us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Praise God. So, this earth is a battlefield for two kingdoms. It's a battlefield for the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. It's a battle between light and darkness, good and bad. It's a battlefield. If we don't understand that, we will just be in the middle and then be suffering on on two challenges. Colossians 1.13, scripture says, God has, Jesus has redeemed us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his own dear son. So, the moment you say, Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Forgive my sins. I declare you as Lord of my life. You have changed kingdoms. You have changed kingdoms. You have led the kingdom of the devil to the kingdom of God. Now, when Jesus Christ came here, he didn't come to introduce religion. He came to introduce a kingdom. A kingdom. A kingdom. He came to introduce to us a kingdom. That is why God is so called king. So every child of God is a child of a king and therefore lives in a kingdom. Kingdom simply means a king over a domain. So God is referred to as the king. Psalm 47 verse 2. For the Lord Moses is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. Psalm 47 verse 7. For God is the king of all the earth. Malachi 1.14 But cursed be the deceiver which has in his flock a male and, and vow it and sacrifice unto the Lord a corrupt thing. For I am a great king. God speaking. Now, when Jesus also came here, he didn't come to introduce a religion. He came to introduce a kingdom. He came to bring to us a kingdom. Matthew 4, 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent ye, for the kingdom is at hand. Mark 1, 14, 15. Now, after that John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. And say, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Therefore, any time a man repent and believe the gospel, what is it? He is embracing a kingdom. Hallelujah. So all of us who are born again, we, are, we have embraced the kingdom of God. When a man refuses to accept Jesus, he chose to live in the kingdom of the devil. Where Satan there is king. In the kingdom of the devil, Satan is king. In the kingdom of God, God is king. I've said several here before that. 
Christianity is not a democracy. It's a divine autocracy. It's a kingdom. In a kingdom, you don't have a say. <laughs> In a kingdom, you don't have a say. The king says so, you follow so. You can't say, what, what does the king mean? It's called rebellion. It's called high treason. And you can die for it. That's why when Adam committed high treason, he didn't know he was in a kingdom. He didn't know. He thought he was in a friendship. <laughs> Adam thought he was, because God can come and come and talk to him, discuss with him. So he thought he was in a friendship. He didn't know God as a king. As a king, God judges. As a king, as a father, he loves. As a king, he judges. And many Christians don't know those di- no, the multifaceted dimensions of God. The moment before God created man, there was no mention of Lord. He was God. 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 When he made man, his lordship appeared. Why? Lordship is over a, a people or a, a realm. So the moment man was created, God became Lord. The Lord God. And the Lord God. And the Lord God. And the Lord God. His kingdom was established and man was his subject. Adam was his subject. So we have been redeemed into a kingdom. You must understand God as the sovereign king. If you don't understand that, you will not be able to maximize the multifaceted dimensions of God. You're not going to know how to live in a kingdom. Many people, Christians, commit atrocities because they don't know that they are in a kingdom with laws. They don't know. All the above scriptures paint to us that redemption is a call from the kingdom of the devil to the kingdom of God. It's a tussle of kingdoms. It's a battle of kingdoms. The kingdom of light. For instance, Genesis 1 verse 1 to 3. In the beginning, God made heaven and earth, created heaven and earth. The earth was that for me. Satan came to mash it up. Then verse 3, God said, let there be light. The kingdom of darkness was ruling the earth and God came and dispelled darkness. So it's a kingdom against kingdom. In chapter 24 of Matthew, Jesus Christ said, you shall see, you shall hear of wars. You shall see kingdoms rather against kingdoms. It's a battle of kingdom. For instance, in Togo nearby here, uh, the Germans were the one colonizing Togo before. The French came and dispelled them. Kingdoms against kingdoms. Kingdoms. Battling kingdoms. So the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the devil are in a power castle on this earth. To make it more specific, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the devil are in a power castle over your life. You can choose who to vote for. It's like Akufado and Mahama. Fighting for your vote. They can do everything to hurt your vote. Because you know one vote counts a lot. Have you? You can lose one vote. You can win one vote. Just one like this. <laughs> you know, to win an election, you need to score 50 plus 1. 50% plus 1. Have you? 50% plus 1. Then you are born. That is how God and Satan are on your life. They are in a power tussle. So anytime you have a temptation, what's happening is that at the, at the junction of a temptation, two kingdoms are fighting. The kingdom of God wants you to prove him right. The kingdom of Satan also wants you to prove him right. That he's the one ruling you. So anywhere you swear, if you step, if you give in to the temptation, you have just clapped for the kingdom of the devil. Satan says, God, God don't talk. That Satan, that, <laughs> Satan says, God don't talk. I've, 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 I've won. <laughs> and all because of what you did. Can you see? Now, when you refuse to give in to that temptation, thereby committing sin. God says, I told you I'm the God of all the earth. <laughs> That's how it is. Everywhere. 
So God representing the kingdom of light is in the contention over your soul with the kingdom of darkness. And you know something? The decision is with you. You can choose to make God win or you can choose to make yourself lose because God can never lose. Praise God. When we understand these things, we will know how to live. Now, what is a kingdom? Before we continue, according to Mas Muro, a kingdom is the governing influence of a king over his territory. Impacting it. Are you writing? A kingdom is the governing influence of a king over his territory. A kingdom is the governing influence of a king over his territory. Impacting it with his personal will, purpose, and intent. Impacting it with his personal will, purpose, and intent. Thereby producing a culture, values, morals, and lifestyles. A kingdom is the governing influence of a king over his territory, impacting it with his personal will, purpose, and intent, thereby producing a culture, values, morals, and lifestyle that reflect the king's desires and nature of his citizens. A kingdom is the governing influence of a king over his territory, Impacting it with his personal will, purpose, and intent, thereby producing a culture, values, morals, and lifestyle that reflect the king's desires and the nature of his citizens. A kingdom. All this long definition and plenty grammar simply means. The ruling influence of a king over a realm. The ruling influence of a king over a realm. Impacting or enforcing his personal will. His personal purpose. His personal desire. His personal intent. In that realm. Thereby producing values, culture. A culture is the way a group of people live. Is that a culture? We define it in school like that. The way a group of people live. So, God's desire will be enforced in a territory. Will compel the members or the citizens of that territory to begin to live in a certain way he God pleases. So you cannot be in a kingdom and do what you please. You cannot. That is why we send people to exile. Hmm? You do what you please in a kingdom that is against the will, the purpose, the intent, the desire of the king. You are sent to exile. Even if you are the son of the king, even if you are the prince, if you misbehave against the laws of the kingdom, your own father will send you to exile because of the laws governing that kingdom. He can go back and go and cry in his room. When the king sits on the throne, he ceases to be a father. <laughs> he is not a judge. Anybody that goes against the throne and the laws of the throne will be chased into exile or punished accordingly. According to the laws, we call it in our, in our nation here the rule of law. Nobody is above the law. Nobody is above the law. When I was, when we were younger, one man from another country was in our, our village there. And then there's something he's supposed not to do. He, did, he was just talking trash. He did it. They packed his luggage that night. Sent him across the border. He can't stay there again. I, I, they sent him across the border. They escorted him. To the go, 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 go to your country. <laughs> you can't stay in this territory, in this kingdom again. Why? 
you have become a threat to the laws of this kingdom. We have been redeemed into a kingdom. Now, a kingdom is the governing influence of a king over his territory, impacting it with his personal will, purpose, and intent, thereby producing his culture, a culture, values, morals, and lifestyle that reflect the king's desires and nature of his citizens. So, if we live a life that does not reflect Reflect the desire of the great monarch, the great king, Jehovah. You know what you are doing? We are going against him. And he can send us to exile. Oh, you think I'm joking? When Satan, Lucifer in heaven, messed up, he thought he could live. He never knew he was in a kingdom. He thought he was in a relationship. <laughs> Lucifer thought he was in a relationship. He was living in a kingdom where God is the great king. Hmm. They say in Mount Zion, the side of the north, the city of the great king. So the throne of God in heaven establishes his kingdom and dominion. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. You cannot contend that. When Satan tries to live a life that is not consistent with the desires, with the will, the personal will of that king in heaven, they chase him out. He went to exile. Lucifer, the pride of heaven, became Satan, the devil. Why? He went against the laws that govern the system. There are laws governing the earth. One is the law of gravity. You see, you cannot say me. Come on. What are they talking about? They just gave it to me. from. I just came fresh from heaven. So if you throw me in heaven, I won't fall down. No, no, no. You fall. It's called the laws. No plane stays in the air forever. Why? The law of gravity. You must somewhere come down. No plane will stay in the skies forever. No. Somewhere, somehow, you must what? Touch ground. The power of the law of gravity. This means that a kingdom is a territorial definition of a king. Where his territorial influence can be felt. Where everything and everyone lives according to his will and desires. In that territory, everyone lives according to the pattern of the king's desire. You cannot go against his will. In this Ghana territory, we are, we are in Accra, Abi. In this place now, the king of this territory has laws. You go against it, they will deal with you. One is when they are doing that, they are, they are festival, you don't play drum. If you want to live in this territory, that's the law. Simple. Don't make noise. If you want to live in my territory, that's the law. Why then do we respect the laws of men and go breaking the laws of God? The son of the king of this territory himself cannot play, cannot make noise or break, you know, play, play drums in that season. Living in the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is where God lives and where he extends his dominion, his influence from. That's where he lives. Psalm 103 verse 19. The Lord has prepared his throne in the heaven and his kingdom ruleth over all the earth. The Lord has prepared his throne in heaven and his kingdom ruleth over all. So God is the king that rules in heaven. John 18 verse 34 Jesus speaking said Pilate therefore asked him Are thou a king then? Jesus answered Thou seest that I am a king To this end was I born And for this cause came I to the world You see Thou seest that I am a king Verse 36 He said My kingdom is not of this world 
and he will tell you he came from heaven. So his kingdom is from heaven. Praise God. We are called to live in a kingdom. And in the kingdom of God, God is the sole governor in that kingdom. It is a divine autocracy. You don't say, God, wait till you are, when you are writing the book, you consult me. Let me also make my input. You see? You don't make your input. He has written his Bible. Created his whole kingdom. You want to live in the kingdom. You have to subscribe to the laws covering the kingdom. Those are the laws that govern a Christian life. The Christian life is not a signature to anyhow living. It's not. Any gospel that tells you you can do what you like. No. You don't do what you like. You do what is right. According to the laws of the kingdom. You don't live in my house and do what you want. Abi, I tell you what we do here. We pray every night. We pray every morning. Eh, me, I'm not different. I'm not different. Ah. Over that one, see? You sleep outside. Porsche is can testify. <laughs> you will sleep where? Outside. At midnight, we pray. Eh, me, I want to have full sleep. Sleep outside. There are laws governing it. The laws that govern your house is not the one that govern my house. They are all houses. They are all homes. The laws that govern your own cannot govern my own. So you don't transfer or you don't transport laws from one kid. Eh, when I was in Satan, eh, we used to drink a small, small, so... <laughs> God, just give me that allowance. We drink small, small. <laughs> I am a lover of scripture. Bible says, no drunkard shall have a place in the kingdom of God. No what? No drunkard. Not one. Not, not one. Not even a bishop who is a drunkard. Eh? Who is a drunkard? He's a drinker. <laughs> a drunkard is the one who drinks. <laughs> eh? You want to, I'm talking about me, I can drink one more, but I'm not booze. It is a boozer. A drunkard shall not find a place in the kingdom of God. So you lift one thought of happiness into your mouth, you are a drunkard. Bible said, not one. Not one. People tell us that, you know, didn't Paul tell Timothy to drink small alcohol because of his stomach issue? Paul was speaking there, giving Timothy a medical advice. We don't think. He was giving Timothy a medical, he was speaking from a medical counselor's perspective. Who counseled you to drink alcohol? Who counseled you? You advise yourself. It's got self medication that you are doing, and it will kill you. He was talking to Timothy from a medical standpoint of view. He wasn't telling him to go and take alcohol. Because of your often infirmity, take a little of this. He was speaking from a medical understanding. If you want to drink this, go to doctor. Doctor, I want to drink it. <laughs> prescribe drinking for me. <laughs> when the doctor prescribed drinking for you on medical grounds and it is genuine, go ahead and drink. If you want. If he kills you, come for your, come for your barrier. Come for your barrier. Come for your barrier. When he said, we should, we should, we should, only we should come and drop sand. We should carry some foolish man. Die and go. <laughs> Die. When I see you from hell, I'll see you from heaven. When you're in hell. Praise God. <laughs> there are laws governing the kingdom. There are laws in the kingdom. A kingdom is a place governed by laws. With one king. So there is no input from you. When I was in the devil, we used to drink one beer, one beer, one beer. So one beer will not do anything. One beer cra, uh, is just to be me. You know? <laughs> beer is just for me to be me. And, and, uh... No. In the kingdom of God, 
it is written there not one drunkard not one not even half will find a place in heaven <laughs> in the kingdom of god now when we talk about the kingdom most of times we are only thinking of heaven abi abi when we get to heaven at the marriage supper all the friends are gathered at the party in the thing in a vintage, I did that, it does it, that I did that, it did that. It do it. Hallelujah. There are three dimensions of the kingdom of God. Three. Uh, many people only think of the kingdom above. That is the, the one we'll go after we leave this earth. Oh boy, I can't wait for the that kingdom. Kaya, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where the streets are paved with gold. Kaya. Ay, 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 ay. I can't wait. I can't wait to be beholding God forever. I can't wait. They are uh, so when we talk of the kingdom of God, we are talking about about three dimensions of the kingdom. That will help us to understand that when uh, you're living, you're you're living your living according to the laws of the kingdom is not just okay heaven I'm not living righteously I'm not striving for righteousness because just because of heaven no they are all that I'm striving for righteousness because that is how to live in the kingdom of God that is how to live there is how to live in this kingdom there are three dimensions of the kingdom of God number one the kingdom above we all know about it the kingdom above speaks of our heavenly home after our journey on the earth. Somebody was asking me, Pastor, uh, didn't uh, uh, what, uh, so he said that you know uh, there, there's no heaven, you go and return to the earth. I don't know, I don't know about it. What I know is that you know one day will come and I will not be here again. They are right. Me too, I'm right. All of us are right. Eh? Whether we'll go to heaven for 70 years and return here, I know that I will be out of this uh, katakata on this earth. Don't argue things that, don't, that you don't have control over. What that will go to heaven for thousands and return here? They say a new, new earth. I don't want to know. What I know is that they are giving me certain laws that I should live by. When I live by it, oh, there's a place called heaven or paradise or wherever we are going. Where we are living before God forever. My responsibility is to accept those laws and live by them. Wherever God takes you tomorrow is his choice. We go about striving for things that don't add value to us. Okay, now, if it is heaven for a thousand uh, years, hundred years, what contribution do you have to make? Huh? Imagine, uh, okay, hey, we'll go thousand and return here. Okay, we'll go yourself and return here. We'll go there forever. Okay, okay. What contribution will you make to it? Zero. So, those who say we'll go there thousands and return, they are right. Those who say we'll go there thousands and return, we are, they are right. Those who say we'll go there forever, they are also right. All of us are right. Praise God. Uh, but uh, what would take you to that place, either for a thousand years or for ten years old, or for forever, is what you must concern yourself about. <laughs> it's what you must concern yourself about. Not okay, uh, we'll go there one time. Someone they ask me, say, Pastor, I, you know, I want to ask you a question. What is it? When you go to heaven, will you see Jesus one side, Holy Ghost one side, God, God the Father one side? I look at him, I say, This boy, I just say, this, boy, <laughs> this boy is confused. This boy is confused. I say, Look, well. I have not been there before. <laughs> so, I don't know how it looks like. So you wait. When I go there and I see, I come and tell you. <laughs> he look at me. He say, what? Are, like, maybe a pastor. Is and so what? <laughs> it's pastorship. The ticket to go to heaven. <laughs> Being a pastor is not a ticket to heaven. It's not. It's not. I have not been there before. So you wait here on the earth. When the trumpet sound, I'll go. <laughs> I, I cannot look through the windows of heaven. Ah, coming! <laughs> oh, is that that's so? <laughs> you don't con- don't concern yourself about theology. Don't bother religion. That's religion. You see, be concerned about what do I do. So when I go there, I'll go and see. People can say, hey, go to heaven. There's God different. I have not been there. So they are right. Me too, I'm right. All those are right, too. <laughs> for me, oh, all of us are right. Eh? Prayer is no good. Prayer is good. You are right. Me too, I'm right. 
My mother doesn't do money for that. So, oh, no. Some years ago, that gave me a very serious counsel. Uh, one day, one uh, some other faith people came to him, and then uh, they were discussing the Bible. And they said, "No, there's no heaven. See, there's heaven. There's no heaven. See, there's heaven. There's no heaven. There's heaven. There's no heaven. There's no heaven. There's no heaven. And then she, the person said, "There's no heaven." He said, "Okay, wait. If you are going to like Accra, and then somebody say Accra is two cities, another person say Accra is five cities, transport fare, two cities, five cities, two cities, five cities." And they advise what to do. You better take the five cities. Eh? So that when you are going and they say it's two cities, now two or three cities. Then take two cities. <laughs> oh, they get to say it's five cities, then you miss out. <laughs> I mean, you better take the five cities. So as you are going and they say the fair is two cities, so you have change. Then for me to take the two cities as I sit in the car, they say, yeah, and I give my two cities. <laughs> And then I gave her two cities. And then the driver went to say, Hey, hey, Gina, 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 Jacob. <laughs> it's not to these five cities. You have lost. So let me believe in the heaven. <laughs> so that as we are going, if God says, Ah, they're heaven. Okay, God, where are you going? Let's go. Wherever we go, we go. But let me believe in the heaven first and leave the ladder that will take me to heaven. Don't convince me to live in hell. When the time comes, they say, There's heaven. No. And I say, Ah, but, but God, that pastor told me there's no, there's no heaven. <laughs> no, no. Uh, Concern yourself about what you are asked to do here. So that when the time comes for you, wherever they take you to, either it's paradise or Armageddon, uh, whatever they take you to, they take you there. That's God's prerogative. Where we will go is God's prerogative. What I should do here is my responsibility. Be wise and be smart. Hallelujah. So we have the kingdom above. Whatever that is. <laughs> Matthew 16 28. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Talking about what the rapture happened. Kingdom above. Who we'll go somewhere? Whether we we'll go there for a thousand years and come back here, God knows. Whether we we'll go there two years and come back here, God knows. But I'm concerned about the life I'm supposed to live here. How do I live so I can be a part of the kingdom? That's my responsibility. Number two, the kingdom within. The kingdom within talks of the demonstration of the power of God among men. The, the, the practical demonstration of the power of God among men. In 1 Corinthians 4.20, Paul speaking said, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. And in, in power. In power. So the kingdom of God is not in just mere word speaking. It's in the demonstration of the power of God. Among men. Among men. Hmm. Thank you Holy Spirit. We saw Nicodemus came talking to Jesus about the demonstration of power in his ministry. And Jesus answered him in a way that gives, gives us a revelation. John 3, 3 to 5. From verse 1, he said, there was a man of Pharisees that came to Jesus and said, Ah, Master, no man can do these things that that do except God be with him. So you are talking about the signs and wonders in Jesus' ministry. Hmm? He saw that they, the Pharisees, don't have miracles and wonders. And the thing they teach don't have any value. Now, what Jesus is teaching and the accompanying signs and one that proves something. And Jesus gave him an answer that will give us an insight here about the kingdom within. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born again when he is old? Can he enter his mother's womb a second time? Jesus answered, Verily, verily I say unto you, Except a man be born of water of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. In verse 3, Jesus Christ told him that except a man be born again, he cannot understand the kingdom of God, how he functions. So, you pray for the sick, he's healed. And the doctor says, how are you talking about? He's not born again. The doctor is not born again. He says, how are you talking about? How can he pray for the cancer to go? No, 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 no. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Yes, it shouldn't make sense. Because he is operating outside of the kingdom of God. He cannot understand. I mean, for instance, in all those, some of those Western countries, 
people who are not working have some something allowance they give them money. So you can just wake up from his house and then go to the bank and then go and collect certain allowance. Now the African does not understand that mean. <laughs> you say, what do you mean? You didn't work, you collect money. What, what is the meaning of that? Because it's operating outside of that kingdom. So except you are born again, you cannot understand how the kingdom will pray. So that is say, let me tell you something. So when you are born again, that is what begins to teach you how the kingdom will pray. That's why you come for services. So you are being taught how the kingdom of God that you are subscribed to operate. You buy a new machine, not like me. Hallelujah. You buy a new machine, you have to read the manual <laughs> to know how it functions. Eben don't have patience for that. I get it. I look at it. She and shag about I just saw the man for the camera just sit down there yesterday. And I said, Oh, it is also day. <laughs> we hand me, we want to hand me. That's what we call Habba most of the times. So he told her, Look, until you are born, you cannot understand. These things will be stories to you. How can you say, Okay, you lay hand on somebody's business card? You are getting a job tomorrow and the person get a job. What do you mean? Who are you? Are you the owner of the company? No. <laughs> Until you are born again, you cannot understand how the kingdom will operate. Now, verse 5. He told him. He said, except you are born of the spirit, you cannot function in the kingdom of God. So there is one way of understanding the kingdom. There's another way for you to function in the kingdom. Jesus Christ was functioning in the kingdom. He was demonstrating the kingdom life for them. The kingdom within. It's the kingdom you carry within that you can carry to people. Praise God. So Jesus will be coming and then demons will be screaming out of people. Why? He is not coming as Jesus. He is coming as a kingdom representation. When an ambassador of America is passing by, the police of Ghana, yes sir, they will salute him. Huh? You see those, those carry drive with those small, small flags in front of it. Try it. And go and pull one flag. <laughs> and say, what do you mean? <laughs> you will rot in jail. Why? He is not coming as, what is the American ambassador name here? Jesus is Lord. The ambassador of America, when he is driving on the road, he is not driving as a man. I assume his name is John. Eh? He is not driving as John. He is driving as America. He is America on the streets of Ghana. Are you getting it? Because he is a representation of the nation here. So he is carrying the kingdom he represents within him. So that is the whole of America in Ghana. Whatever he says, America must back it up. If you come and see me now, if that man come and see me and say, Ah, Pastor, uh, I just love you. Uh, we will give you, as in America will give you $10 billion uh, on Monday. So uh, I promise you. The president of America, who is the president now? <laughs> uh, who is the president now? <laughs> he cannot, he, he's, 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 eh? he cannot say, okay, uh, is that the man who I'm not part of it? No. <laughs> that is why when a believer full of the kingdom of God speaks, God back him up. He is functioning from the kingdom. He is in alignment with the king. Functioning in his will. So the king must back him up. So Jesus said, Except you are born of the spirit. You cannot function from the kingdom. You cannot demonstrate the kingdom power and authority. You cannot. You cannot. You cannot. So we have one, the kingdom above. Two what? The kingdom within. One final scripture, then we go to the third one. Acts chapter 1, verse 6 and 8. Disciples came with asking Jesus Christ some questions. Uh, after he rose, they asked him some questions. And then Jesus said, they asked him, they said, Master. They said, when they were gathered, they asked him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore the kingdom again to Israel? Because the kingdom of God, the kingdom of, or no, originally belonged to Israel. And the, those people came to take it away from the Romans, came to, take it from, you know, came to oppress them. And they were asking whether Jesus Christ, they were expecting, the, the king they were expecting is a man who will come and defeat the Romans and give the kingdom back 
to the Jews. So in their local mindset, they were asking him because they want to be cabinet ministers. They want to be in this kingdom or as Jesus win now, men will be cabinet ministers because he's the president now. We are the cabinet ministers. So will you do it now so we can go and carry our tools and end our office? Jesus said, No, no, don't worry yourself. You don't need to worry about this earthly kingdom. He said, You receive power. When the Holy Ghost come on you, then you shall demonstrate the kingdom on the earth. Because this kingdom I brought is not around, it's in you. When the Holy Ghost comes, he brings the kingdom of God in you. And you know the kingdom of God is not in words, it's in power. So when the Holy Ghost comes, I was there, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes. So when you shall receive the kingdom of God in you when the Holy Ghost comes. Then you shall be demonstrating that kingdom from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria to the uttermost part of the world. The kingdom within. Jesus Christ speaking said, He said, said, The kingdom of God is within you. You are a carrier of heaven on earth. When the Holy Ghost rests on you heavily, do we have the kingdom above? The kingdom within. Number three, we have the kingdom upon. The kingdom upon. This is talking about the influence of God over the circum, over the earth, over the earth. The, in a, it is establishing the dominion of God in the hearts of men and across every human affair. That is where influence comes in. Fire. That is why the emergence of kingdom giants comes in. That is why you never feel up and never find yourself you are the king in that place. Praise God. Jesus speaking said, Luke eleven twenty. 20, as if I with the finger of God cast out devils, no doubt, the kingdom of God is upon you. The kingdom of God is here on the earth. Meaning the influence of God has chased out the devil from that person's lives. That person's life. No doubt, the kingdom of God is upon you. It, it has arrived here practically. That's what it means. So the kingdom upon Matthew 16, he taught us to pray. Pray thy kingdom come. Meaning thy influence come. Thy dominion come. Your dominion should rule the earth. Your power come. The kingdom of God. Praise God. Praise God. It is an effective living in these dimensions of the kingdom that creates for us a place in the kingdom of God. Until we, so what we talk about, you know, living the kingdom, it's not just about, you know, so, 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 your righteous living, your, your prayerful life, your all those things, they are not just to take you to heaven. No, they are to give you a place in the kingdom. One, the kingdom above. That is later, later. It can happen tomorrow. Later doesn't mean 10 years ago. It can happen tomorrow. <laughs> it can happen tomorrow. It can happen just after this service. It can happen in this service now. You just see me now. You just see this red dress and this dress. They just fall down and then they just see me going. <laughs> May I meet you there? In the name of Jesus, I will meet you there. Hallelujah. I'll meet you there. We'll be doing destiny on in heaven. God will give us a place there. Yeah. I'll meet you there. Hmm. So I want to tell you again, it's not just talking about kingdom above. Every lifestyle that the kingdom has prescribed, the king has prescribed for us in his constitution, the Bible. Is for us to have effective living in the kingdom. One, the kingdom above later, the must be the kingdom within and the kingdom upon. So living according to the word of God, the scriptures is the the, the, the prescription of the scriptures is the way we live in the kingdom. For instance, Ghana as a kingdom or as a, a nation has constitution. In Ghana, we drive. Is it on the right or the left? Which one? Right or left? Right. We drive on the right side of the road. You can't say, man, 
yo, man, I just came from London and we're driving on the left side of the road. So, man, come on. You know, you know, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I'm going to drive left side of the road. Left side of the road. Those people you black shirt will just catch you and they come. When you speak that grammar, they will bully you very well. They will collect money from you. Hallelujah. <laughs> you, <laughs> you just give them lunch or supper, heavy money. That's the day they will go and eat a biscuit. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. So God gave us laws to live by. Laws. I know, I know, you know why people say that, you know, uh, we are not called into the kingdom of laws, da, 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 blah, 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 blah. They are equating us to the former Israel, which is not. Israel are the former, or the former Israel in the Bible, they had the laws, couldn't keep it because it takes the spirit of God to keep the laws of the spirit. Now, they didn't have the spirit of God in them, so they were breaking the laws. You cannot keep the laws of God until you have the spirit of God in you. Ezekiel 36, verse 26, 27, 28. He said, I will, he said, a new heart will I give you. And he said, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to keep my laws. You shall walk in my ways and do them. So it takes the spirit of God to do the laws of God. You cannot please God in the flesh. Romans 8, 8. You cannot. You cannot keep the laws of God in the flesh. Never. You cannot. That is why you need to be in the kingdom to keep the laws of God. So, yeah, I'm not born again, but I'm a good man. Our, our ladies understand this. There, there is no good man who is uh, worth married by a child of God. He can be as good as anything. The good devil. He is just a good devil. If he is not born again, no, he is a good devil. Praise God. Marrying an unbeliever is, is like a buying poison huh? and keep your kitchen when there is light up. Poison. Keep your kitchen. DDT in that bottle when it's light up. So, you want to say, cook for me, you're going to the kitchen, you're cook, 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 and then cook, 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 then just pour something inside, <laughs> you, are, you are cooking, pouring things, pouring something, and then you eat and you die. <laughs> That's the idea. <laughs> because there is light out, you don't know what you are cooking. <laughs> it takes the spirit, Israel didn't have the spirit of God in them, so they couldn't keep the laws of God. They cannot. They cannot. They say, yeah, me, I'm a good man, I'm a good man, I'm a good man. When that man came to Jesus, what should I do? To inherit eternal life, Jesus said, Go and keep the laws. He said, I've been keeping all of them. He says, Okay, this one, go and I'm giving you another law now. This is another law I'm adding to it. Go and sell it to you have and then come. He said, uh-uh, No, he couldn't do because what he, <laughs> he didn't have the Holy Ghost in him. <laughs> Peter promised Jesus, Me, I will die with you. I, I swear, I'll die with you. Jesus said, Relax, relax. You cannot keep that law because you don't have the Holy Ghost inside you. I got it. So when pressure came from a, a, a tiny Housemaid, Peter melted. I mean, he was swearing profusely. I don't know that man. That man, I don't know him. <laughs> I swear to God, I don't know him. In fact, I swear in Jesus' name, I don't know him. <laughs> Jesus said, I, I miss you. I'm calling my name. I swear my name. <laughs> but when the Holy Ghost came, Peter stood up and confronted the people who, 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 who was accosting him before. It takes the Holy Ghost to kill the loss of God. Romans 8, verse 1 and 2. For the law of the spirit of life has made me free from the law of sin and death. So it takes the law of the spirit of living under the demand of the Holy Ghost to keep the law of sin and death. Praise God. The kingdom of God. Living again. So the kingdom of God that we are subscribed to is not a place of playing. There is how to live in this kingdom. And from next Sunday, we'll be discussing it. Uh, the forces that makes a man to live in this kingdom. Praise God. The forces that makes a man to live effectively in this kingdom. You can live well in the kingdom of God. You can. God has not left us without a pattern. He has a pattern for us. Making us to live in a kingdom. Praise God. Making us to live in the kingdom. So if you don't appreciate such patterns, you see that you will just be shadow boxing and be causing havoc 
everywhere because you don't understand how to live in the kingdom. Don't forget Lucifer. Ezekiel 28, 12 to 19. He was in heaven and made the sun in the morning the pride of heaven. Then he chose not to live again according to the law of the kingdom and then he was chased out of the system. So you can be chased out of his kingdom if you don't live according to the laws. For instance, for instance, one, 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 one article is this. You can be living in a kingdom. You can be born again in a kingdom. Until you accept the demand of prayer, fasting, and the world, you can't walk in power. So the kingdom will do not find expression through you. So you are, op- you are born again, no, but you are living outside of the kingdom because the kingdom within cannot find expression through you. I get it. For instance, the kingdom upon cannot find expression through you if all your labor is hand to mouth. Let me get to eat and let me just eat and just. If you cannot discover something and labor for, discover an assignment and labor for the kingdom upon, which is the dominating influence of God over the earth, cannot find expression through you. God cannot use you as a conduit to rule the earth. The king in you will die. The ruler in you will die. The kingdom upon will die. All because you have not accepted responsibility to labor, to pursue something, to pursue a purpose, to pursue a discovery that will advance his kingdom. So so you can be living outside the kingdom. You might be ready for the kingdom above. But here on the earth, your place is lost. There is how to live in a kingdom. And uh, if you don't live according to those demands and those laws, you will just be thrown here and there, here and there, here and there. When Adam chose to do what he likes, he was taken out of the kingdom. When Lucifer chose to do what he likes. Now, when the kingdom was initiated fresh after the upper, up, no, after the upper room experience, Ananias and Sapphira did not understand the kingdom living. They didn't understand it. So they were living against the kingdom demand and they died there and there. They died. There is how to live in this kingdom. Not to be a casualty. And by the grace of God and in the name of Jesus, in this series, I don't know how many Sundays will take us, in this series, God will show us how you will live in this kingdom. That will make you to maximize your life here. You are not redeemed to be ruined. No, you are redeemed to reign. But there is how to live to be reigned. To reign. A, 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 a son, a prince, who is going against the laws of the kingdom, they will put him on the throne. Never. If you go to Exodus, you, you, you can't rule a, a, a kingdom from Exodus. No. That is why when somebody is an ex-convict, eh, they say, no, you can't be voted for. An ex-convict, he killed people. He, he stole money. He, they, they jailed him for 50 years. You can't be okay, vote for me. Say, no, 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 no. You were in jail for 50 years. <laughs> we can't vote for you. You can't trust you. We can't trust you. Because you were not living according to the laws of the kingdom. So how do you know that now that you are a king, you live according to the Lord's kingdom? Praise God. That's why before they come, so they, they go and check your track record. So be careful. Okay? All of you who post naked pictures on Facebook and uh, on uh, Instagram, be careful. The day you are becoming something, and then they will go and look for all those things and bring it out. They say, ah, this person, A9, in 2005, see what the picture he posted. So they see what he posted on WhatsApp. So they posted on uh, You think nothing on social media even if you delete it it's not deleted it's somewhere somewhere they're waiting for you you know satan is the accuser of the brethren he's waiting so be careful even the statement the comment you post on social media be careful be careful be careful be careful be careful don't say me i don't there are some things i might have posted social media some 10 years ago i may not know that be here today because I lack understanding. God forbid that someone can raise it tomorrow. Be careful. Be careful. There is how to live in this kingdom. And God will show us this month in the name of.
of Jesus Christ. Let's rise to your feet. Lift your voice. Father, I receive grace to accept the responsibilities that will make me to live effectively in the kingdom of God. Lift your voice and pray for yourself. I receive grace to accept responsibility so I can live effectively in the kingdom of God. Father, I receive grace to accept responsibility so I can live effectively in the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious mighty name. Amen. Be blessed of God. Jesus Christ.